Hi and welcome back. This week I'm going to show you how to make quiche Lorraine. I'm going to break it down into three simple parts, the pastry, the filling and the custard. I'm going to start off by making the pastry and as usual it's flour and this is 200 grams and here I have 100 grams of butter. Normally when I make flour, uh, pastry, not flour, um, I put half of butter and half of lard in but today I'm going to, this is slightly different, I'm going to put all butter in and like usual we just go in with the knife and we chop it up a bit and I'll go in with my hands and make breadcrumbs. It's quite satisfying actually. If you go in with your hands straight away you just end up with it all sticky over your fingers so it's best to go in with a knife first and make sure the butter is cold. Pastry likes everything to be cold not good to be made on a warm day <laughs> with a gale blowing outside. <laughs> there we go. And now I'm just going to go in with my hands and rub it together to make breadcrumbs. There's something quite nice about making pastry. I know some people find it difficult but actually it isn't difficult. Just patience. If you can't be bothered, you could go to the shop and buy some ready-made short crust pastry. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> and you could pretend you've made it yourself. Years ago, I was on holiday with a friend and she, was, she produced these gorgeous quiches. And the pastry was fantastic and it was so neat in the cases. I kept saying, how did you do this? And she wouldn't tell me. And it was a few years later that she actually told me she bought the cases ready-made and just made the filling. <laughs> That's breadcrumbs. Normally, when you make a short crust pastry, you just add water, but this is slightly enriched, so I'm going to add the yolk of one egg. Now you're going to watch me break the whole thing. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to put the yolk in there Oops. and there we have this gorgeous yolk in the middle. I'm going to try and mix this in now and I will need a little bit of water to go with it because obviously that isn't enough to bind all the uh, pastry so I'm going to add about a tablespoon of water I'm just going to go in my, with my knife and wiggle it around until it starts coming together. And if I need more water, I'll add more water. Yeah, that's going to need a bit more water. Just add a little bit more. It's coming together now. Just going to dive in with my hands and squidge it together until I get a lovely smooth ball of pastry. There we go. There's the pastry done. That was easy, wasn't it? I'm just going to wrap it in some cling fill. Get that from over here. Put a little bit of flour on it. Put that there, move that out of the way. I'm just going to wrap this up and put it in the fridge. This needs to go in the fridge for about half an hour because you want the butter to firm up and then it'll be ready for rolling. For the second part, I'm going to fry some onions and some bacon. It's best to fry them before you put them into your flan. So this is one whole onion, and that's going in here. So. 
I'm going to fry these until they begin to soften and then I'm going to add my bacon. The bacon is just eight rashers um, out of a packet. I've chopped it up and once this is softened I'll just chuck that in. I think that's ready now so I'm just going to put in the bacon. bacon um, will impart some of its juices into the onions and you'll end up with this lovely caramelised sort of bacon filling to go in the bottom of your quiche. That looks like it's ready to go in the base of the flan. All that's left to do now is just turn the heat off and it can go cold. Through the magic of telly we've whizzed on 30 minutes and here we have our nice firmed up pastry which we're going to use to line our flan tin. So take it out of its bag, get rid of that, flour our surface a bit on top and we just start rolling it out to form a circle. I'm going to use it to line, I think my flan tin is about 20 centimetres wide, it's a deep flan tin with a loose bottom. So here goes on my wobbly table. <laughs> Turn it. I'm giving it a quarter of a turn because I want it to sort of stay round. When I want round, I get rectangles. When I want rectangles, I get round. There we go. Let's get our flant in and check. Yep, I think that'll fit. Right, let's put that, oops. Let's roll this onto here first. And then we'll put our flant in there. And let's roll it into here. Push it in. Oops. Let's get that in. We're just going to use this little bit of our knuckle of our finger of our finger to just push it round and into the base of the tin. There we go. There we go. And we're going to push it into all the little flutes. Now because I've got bits over this side, <laughs> but the pastry isn't quite deep enough, I'm just going to take off some of this and just brush it with a little water and just use it to press in at the top here. I'm just going to get my rolling pin and just gently go over the edges. Push the pastry and cut it. And we have our flanton. use these bits up and make jam tarts or give them to your children to make jam tarts. Don't waste the last little bit, jam tarts are gorgeous. We always used to have jam tarts on a Sunday with the leftover pastry my mum had used to make our puddings. Right, now I'm going to put my pastry case on a baking tray mainly because it's loose bottomed as you can see. Can you just see that? And I have, in the past, made the mistake of holding my pan underneath and pushing the bottom out and the whole thing 
just flopping all over the place and you can imagine my language when I did that. Not pretty. <laughs> so this is how I do it, just so that I don't make that mistake again. I'm just going to prick the base now of my flan dish. And this is so if there's any air trapped underneath in the bottom, it can escape. Here I've got baking parchment and I'm going to scrunch it up. Okay. So now this is all scrunched up, I'm going to line my tin with it. And this is called baking blind. Here I've got, these are like little ceramic balls. Um, you can buy them in the cookware area of any sort of super, supermarket or a cook shop. If you haven't got these, just use rice or pulses. But remember, if you do use rice or pulses, keep those to one side, don't eat them. <laughs> Put them in a jar and use them just for doing this. We pour these into the base, spread them round and now the pie, the flan, thinks there's something in there and we can now put it in the oven. I'm going to put it in the oven for about 15 minutes at 200 degrees and then I will take it out of the oven, remove the beans and then I'll put it back in the oven without the parchment for another 10 minutes, just so that the bottom crisps up and you don't get a soggy bottom. The pastry's been in the oven for about 25 minutes. It's now all crispy inside, so I'm now going to add the caramelized onions and the crispy bacon. Just spread it out a bit so that you know everybody gets an even amount of onion and bacon. Right. Over here I have got prepared some cheese. Now this is a Conti cheese which is a very similar to a Gruyere. I would normally use Gruyere, maybe half Gruyere, half cheddar. It depends on what you like. You mix it around a bit. You could just use all cheddar if you wanted to. This is approximately 150 grams. And that just gets spread evenly over our bacon and onion. When I was researching this, I actually discovered that the original um, quiche Lorraine wasn't made with cheese. Something that's happened recently. And now all we have to do is the egg custard. I'm going to pour, right, let's get all my bits together, 250 ml of cream into my jug. I'm going to have to put my glasses on so I can see the measurements. <laughs> a blind cook. 200. There we go. And I'll get a beater out while I'm. I should have done all this first, but I didn't. I'm just going to break two eggs in here and give it a bit of a beat together. There's one. Here's the second one. And just beat them together until the eggs and the cream are incorporated together. These are lovely because these eggs have actually got quite nice yellow yolks because I, I can see that they've now been spread throughout the, the cream. I'll just wash my hands a minute. Oops. Get some salt and pepper. I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of pepper on the top just for a bit of flavouring and seasoning. And just a little bit of salt there is quite a lot of salt in the bacon. All that's left to do now is to pour our egg custard over our flan. There we go. 
this goes back in the oven at 180 for about 25 to 30 minutes. We'll check it and if it's all golden then it'll be ready to eat. I'm so looking forward to having this for our dinner tonight. I haven't got a soggy bottom and it's come out and it's just, it smells absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to have a little bit off the end to tell you what it tastes like. Because this is a Comte cheese, it's a bit stringy, so I need to, oops, get a bit of the pastry. It's a bit stringy. And you do need to be careful because it is cheese and it's hot and now I've got, there's that everything. That is, oh, wonderful. I do hope you're going to have a go at making this. I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little notification button. Thank you. Look at that. All she's done today is walk to the shop and back.